Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? I wanted to make a very quick video today about a really cool tool on Xcode on Mac that lets you see game performance. I haven't really seen anyone else talk about this, so I thought it was definitely worth looking at. There are a few things that you need to keep in mind for this. Um, you need to enable developer mode on your iPhone or iPad. Here is a list of devices that support developer mode on iPhone and iPad. And obviously you will need a Mac. And I think you will need one of the following Macs for this to work. So what we wanna do first is we wanna jump over to our Mac. And we want to open up Xcode. And if you don't have Xcode, you can just go to the App Store and download it. Just open it. Make sure that you now connect your iPhone or iPad to your Mac via a USB connection. Now, jump over to your iPhone or iPad. I'm on an iPad Pro right here, and I've got the iPadOS beta installed. You don't have to have the iPadOS beta. You could have all the way back to iOS 16 or iPadOS 16. It's the same process. So you go into settings, go down to privacy and security, and find developer mode. This will appear if you have connected your device to your Mac and have Xcode open, and enable developer mode and it will restart. And once your iPhone or iPad has restarted and you've enabled developer mode, we are good to go. We can stop here and we can move on to the next step. All right, now let's move over to our Mac. So let's open up Xcode. Xcode, and from here, let's go up to the menu bar and open developer tool instruments. From here, let us create a blank document. First things first, we're gonna add two very important instruments. First one is activity monitor. The next one is core animation FBS. Next, we wanna make sure that our iPhone or iPad is connected to this tool. In this instance, I'm connecting to my iPad Pro 11 inch third gen. And we also then wanna connect it to the game that is currently running on our iPhone or iPad. In this instance, I'm running Resident Evil 7. If we switch over to my iPad Pro, you can see it's up and running right now. So let us select Resident Evil 7 right now. Now, to track the game's performance, we are going to press record. Now, one weird thing I have found is that sometimes the application can freeze. You just need to wait for quite a long time. <clears throat> okay, there it is. Let's look at core animation FPS first. So it is showing us the frames per second in real time, along with GPU hardware utilization. So right now, we are running Resident Evil 7 at prioritized performance settings, which targets 60 FPS. However, if we change this to uh, prioritize graphics, this targets 30 FPS. And when we go back into game, you will see that within Xcode instruments, it is also changed to 30 FPS. So I just wanted to give you a demonstration that um, it is tracking it pretty accurately. What we can do, if, if we stop this recording, we can change the measurements here to statistics and we can see the average frames per second in this recording, which was 50.2 FPS, but do keep in mind that we did change the frame rate down to 30. And we can also see some other information here as well. And we can make these tabs a bit bigger and you got GPU information and so forth. What's also really cool is activity monitor. Now, when you go into this, it's gonna have a lot of information. So let's narrow this down to Resident Evil 7. Now activity monitor is really cool because it will show you uh, CPU info, but also memory usage. So during this recording, 
the game used 4.19 gigabyte of memory. One very important thing worth noting is that with the core animation FPS instrument, it only tracks up to 60 FPS. So you won't be able to, for example, on an iPhone 15 Pro or, or 14 Pro or 13 Pro or iPad Pro models with a 120 Hertz display, you won't be able to track above 60 Hertz or above 60 frames. Um, as well as just in game, you won't be able to track over that. So for example, I've got Grid Autosport and I'm running it under the Performance Plus mode. This provides above 60 FPS. Uh, on this machine, it can run it at 120 FPS. If I, if I press record, you will see that it's only showing 60 FPS when in, in actuality, it is running pretty much at 120 FPS. So that is one of the biggest downfalls of this program but it is all free so it's definitely still worth checking out i also briefly wanted to go over the metal performance hud which is another tool for showing fps resolution memory usage gpu cpu blah 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 usage you can enable this tool by going into developer settings and show graphics hud What's worth noting though is that this HUD will only appear for test flight apps or for games that support the HUD. The only game I've found that supports the HUD is Hades. It's the only one. Or if you are invited to a test flight uh, app, it will also appear. So for example, I was invited to uh, Skull the Hero Slayer by Play Digis and the HUD will appear. Or Ubisoft invited me to Assassin's Creed Mirage, test flight access, and again, the HUD will appear. I also want to note that with the Metal Performance HUD, resolution info may be incorrect on iPhone and iPad. Feral Interactive gave me a very good answer about this. They said resolution values may not be correct as the Metal HUD tool only reports the final resolution of the back buffer rather than the various buffers that result in the final frame. This means that the reported resolution may be inaccurate for any games that use dynamic resolution scaling or have separate resolution for the UI and the 3D environment. Apple only allow the HUD to be used for testing purposes. It is not officially supported by the App Store unless developers add support for it because they can actually add in an API for users to toggle the HUD on and off. But so far, I haven't really found any that use this apart from Hades. The only other way of using the HUD is by jailbreaking your device or by sideloading games to your iPhone or iPad. However, I will not be showing that in this video. But I hope in the future that Apple can allow users to enable the HUD uh, system-wide, same as Mac. But um, I, that probably will happen one day, but we'll have to wait and see because um, as we all know, iPhone and iPad is a very closed ecosystem and um, Apple don't really want the general public to use this tool because it's just for testing, testing game performance. And... Um, yeah, that's all it is. Just want to thank a few people for helping me with this video. Elvarels, Feral Interactive, and Super QA X Club on Twitter. Thank you to all those people.